Elon Musk welcomes you to this episode to announce that Tesla self-driving cars have gone rogue. I've sent a million dollars of Dogecoin to the moon on my SpaceX rocket. Oh, and I created this deepfake with just one image of his face. You see, deepfakes just got a lot easier to create, which means things are about to get a lot weirder fast. Okay, so the crux of this video isn't that deep fakes are a thing. I'm sure that you know that already, but more that quite recently they've become a lot, lot easier for the average person to do. Uh, so we're going to chat through what's been happening, how it works, and look at some of the most common tools that you can use to make them for yourself ethically obviously. But quickly, to fully understand this story and realize why everything's about to go up a gear, it's worth knowing some of the journey so far. After all, deepfakes didn't just pop up overnight. People have been manipulating images and videos for years, famously in 90s films like Forrest Gump when Tom Hanks met JFK, a scene which still looks great today. I gotta pay. And in later movies like The Curious Case of Benjamin Button when Brad Pitt was de-aged throughout it. And although pretty amazing, these examples actually used a combination of a few clever techniques. A mix of dedicated performance capture, CGI, i.e. using a computer-generated model of Brad Pitt's face, body doubles, and lots of manual frame-by-frame -frame work as well. And most people wouldn't consider these kind of processes as deepfakes, but it did lay the groundwork for what was to come next. And the next part of the story is the beginnings of machine learning, specifically deep learning. So on a basic level, you can think of deep learning as a way of teaching machines to do what our brains do naturally, aka learn by example. So imagine that you're a kid learning to identify different types of dogs. By looking at lots and lots of pictures of dogs, you gradually begin to understand the differences between breeds. This is essentially how deep learning works. You feed a machine a lot of data, like lots of images of dogs, and over time it learns to recognize patterns and features in that data, like differentiating between dog breeds. And you can go a step further by training the machine to get better at this deep learning using something called neural networks, basically lots of algorithms that learn to recognize all sorts of patterns within the data set and get better and better over time. Not dissimilar to how the human brain works. All right, hopefully you're still with me at this point because that leads us on to the next stage in the deepfake story, something called GANs. And this is where it gets really interesting and is really the birth of the amazing deepfakes that we see today. So GANs or generative adversarial networks, some big words, uh, are a type of deep learning model that is essentially gamifying the learning process. So I'll explain. So you can think of what's happening here as two big computer brains essentially competing against each other to try and outsmart each other for a given goal e.g. creating a deep fake of a celebrity. And the two computer brains play slightly different roles in this process. So in the example of trying to create a celebrity deep fake, Computer Brain 1 has the role of being the counterfeiter and is trying to create realistic fake images of the celebrity. Computer Brain 2 has the role of the detective and it's using its data set and training and it's trying to spot these counterfeit images that the first one is creating. Every time Computer 2, the detective, does spot an error, it feeds it back to the other computer brain which then learns and keeps trying again and again. As you go throughout this process, both computers are fed with more data and they repeat this process until the detective if one can't tell the difference between a fake or a real image anymore. Both of them have got so good at it, and that's when you end up with a convincing deep fake. Obviously, that's a massive oversimplification, but kind of captures the essence of how these things are created. Another good example that I heard that describes this process well is to imagine that you want to get better at a sport, say, for example, tennis. So the best way to do that would be to play consistently against someone who's had more training and is better at tennis than you. To begin with, you'll get beaten repeatedly, but as you learn from your errors, play consistently for a long time with new information from the best coaches in the world, you'd eventually get better and better until both of you became tennis experts. So that's kind of what's happening here. The machines are becoming experts at a given task until they essentially perfect it. And there's an amazing website, it's called thispersondoesnotexist.com that demonstrates exactly this. So it's used this technique to essentially master creating realistic human faces that don't really exist. So you can hit refresh and it's generating a new one every single time. So when you follow these processes through on multiple frames with video coupled with voice cloning, we suddenly get an explosion of pretty convincing deep fakes. Uh, so let's have a quick look at some of the best and most hilarious ones. Uh, obviously, if you're on the YouTube, you can see this. If not, I'll link them down below. So 
Control Shift Face is an amazing YouTube channel. You might have seen some of these. They've got some of the best examples that I've seen. Uh, they recently added Trump into an episode of Better Call Saul. Who's this? It's the tax man watching your every move. And they were also responsible for the viral clip that went round of Bill Hader's face morphing into various celebrities as he chatted to Jimmy Kimmel using a software called Deep Face Lab, which we'll chat about in just a second. Another great one, this time from YouTube channel Eating Things, shows Jon Snow apologizing for season eight of Game of Thrones. The Starbucks cup is the smallest mistake. You know you f***ed up. There's also the fake Obama speech created by Jordan Peele and BuzzFeed, making him say pretty much whatever they wanted. For instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. And potentially the most convincing of recent times, the incredible Morgan Freeman deepfake uh, by Rob de Jong and Boe Xiaowink, which is probably not how you say it, so apologies, but it is totally mind-blowing. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. What is your perception of reality? Obviously, the space continues to develop and we're starting to see all sorts of different types of models. One that's quite well known is something called diffusion. In simple terms, this works by gradually adding noise to an image and then the machine learns how to reverse it back to its original state. Once it's learned that process, the model can start to predict and generate new data and new frames of an image or video, for example. Again, massively oversimplified. Regardless, the list of deepfake examples goes on and on for better or for worse. It's well documented that the first use cases, as often is the case with new technology and humans, was in porn, often deepfaked scenes of famous or internet famous celebrities. Obviously massively damaging and legislation is beginning to come into place, but it's also kind of difficult to completely stop this stuff. The battle is ongoing and often the damage is done by the time that people find it. There's obviously plenty of controversy here that is continually debated, but it is becoming more and more relevant than ever now that these models have become so good and need less and less data to create high level results. And it leads to obvious big questions of how quite soon we'll be able to prove that any media or any image or any video that we see is real or that we are who we say we are online at all. Sam Altman of OpenAI is famously trying to address this with his project WorldCoin. He's hoping to scan everybody's iris with something called an orb, then hash it, store it on the blockchain and use it to prove our digital identity whilst giving us some world coins so we can survive on universal basic income or something along those lines. And the solution to proving who and what is real online probably lies somewhere in this vicinity, but we discuss it more on the latest episode of the podcast if you wanna dive into that. But of course, it's not just people whose identity we will need to prove, but the fact that any image is itself genuine. Only last week did we see a fake image of an explosion at the Pentagon posted by a verified but still fake Bloomberg News account, which caused the stock market to tumble temporarily before the image was debunked and everything recovered. So we are in that moment where we're starting to see real world effects from deep fakes in all forms now. There are companies rushing to develop tools to spot the fakes, but now as we sort of begin to understand how they're created, it makes it pretty difficult to do. But let's put that debate aside for a second because it's terrifying. Uh, and let's look at who's leading the space at the moment in terms of being at the forefront of kind of modern day deep fakes. One company we definitely need to mention here is Metaphysic. Now you've probably seen their work before. We've had them on the show as well. And they're the company responsible for the amazing deep Tom Cruise, some of the highest quality and also most hilarious deep fakes that exist and constantly go viral. And it's a good example of how a lot of things coming together can make a next level deep fake. A combination of incredible acting by Miles Fisher and some of the highest quality data sets from a famous celebrity and training by the team at Metaphysic. They also recently deepfaked Simon Cowell, who was singing live on America's Got Talent. They've also brought people back from the dead in commercials and done real time performances such as Elvis deepfakes as well. They are also heavily focused on the ethics of all of this and thankfully are leading in what feels like the right way, at least from the outside. And Metaphysic actually have some of their tech open to the public via their hyper realistic avatar creator called every anyone so you can go on their website take a single photo of yourself and begin to manipulate your age weight gender and more it's all in development but soon you'll be able to use it in other settings online as well there are of course lots of viral tiktok and snapchat filters in this realm that do a similar sort of thing and do it really well the results from 
these are now pretty mind-blowing. But these are examples of just playing with your own image. What if you want to experiment with deep faking yourself onto somebody else? Well, as we mentioned at the beginning, a few months ago, you'd have to have a top-of-the-range PC, but not anymore, as there's plenty of services that have popped up that let you do this sort of stuff in just a few clicks. So the first of those is FaceSwap Cool, which is a great option. It just needs a source video and one photo and gives really incredible results. It's on a free trial and then it's a paid plan, but I was pretty blown away by what it churned out. It does take a few minutes to complete it, but it's worth it. And I'll leave the link below if you want to have a play with that. Swap Face is another absurdly good option that lets you deep fake yourself in real time on live streams in seconds. The results aren't perfect, but they are really, really good for the simplicity and ease of use of doing something like that. The video and GIF options, however, are a big jump up. It's pretty wild that this stuff is now so easy and so accessible. Deepswap.ai is another really fun tool that lets you put yourself in famous movie scenes or GIFs and memes. Good one to send to friends and family. Another ridiculous but fun one is Wombo, uh, which is focused on lip syncing songs. Obviously, it's less realistic, but it's still fun. You just need to upload a single image and then watch yourself or other celebrities singing in absolute chaos. If you do want to get a bit more serious with this stuff and you have a decent PC, your next port of call is probably Deepface Lab or Deep Face Live. It's a free program for Windows, a one that's very well known and was used to create that Bill Hader video we mentioned earlier, and it gives you quite a lot more control than some of the other ones mentioned. It also has pre-trained databases on a variety of familiar faces, so you can get uh, pretty creative pretty quickly. You do need a fairly decent PC to get good results with this one, but deep faking your face to Tom Cruise, or should I say Dom Bruise, as he's known on the app, uh, in real time on a work call or on a live stream, is well worth paying for a little upgrade on your PC, I reckon at least. So there we are. The deepfake story continues to evolve, but we've definitely entered an era of it being available to pretty much anyone and whatever that means going forward. And interestingly, maybe the biggest threat isn't the most obvious ones that people are expecting, i.e. that someone will make a video of a world leader pressing that button. Um, this kind of thing is going to be heavily scrutinized and people will be looking for it. Maybe the bigger threat really is that people will just begin to doubt if any media that they see is real at tool and people will stop believing all of it. That is something I reckon that needs to be solved pretty quickly. As always, we'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on in this world on the Based AF YouTube channel. So hit subscribe or follow on your podcast platform. We are looking ahead to what might be a big announcement from Apple and their new headset dropping next week. Uh, so thanks for listening. Take care and see you for the next episode.